All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about meat packing facilities shutting down operations because people are getting sick in their facilities, and we're going to talk about that right after this. Bullshit, I can't hear you. Sound because I am hard, you will not like me. But the more you hate me, the more you will learn. I am hard, but I am fair. Okay, remember that they had said initially that there was not going to be any cause for panic, any need to worry about the food supply or anything else because people are going to be getting everything they need, stores will be restocking, and now, of course, we had, as I had just done previously in the last video, about the media creating panic for people, and this is going to create a huge problem for a lot of people because they're going to start panic buying. So let's get into it. Come on, really? Fine. Empty shelves, huge queues. Coronavirus restrictions have led to familiar scenes across the world. So far, supermarkets and governments have insisted food supplies remain secure, despite the rush. No need to rush into the stores as if all of the food will be gone uh, and there won't be any left to restock. But behind the scenes, there are signs of strain on the way food is grown, made, and delivered. The majority of the global food supply is carried on ships, but the industry is hardly moving, reeling from port closures across the globe. Now more than 30 ports worldwide are either restricting entry to vessels or prohibiting crew changes, making it very difficult for ship owners to plan routes effectively. Air cargo is turning into a hot commodity, but the grounding of commercial aviation has sharply reduced capacity, making it harder and more expensive to move perishable goods. The travel shutdown is taking its toll on the food supply chain, particularly on fresh produce. It also creates a lack of manpower. Normally we'd be looking at peak workforce from somewhere around the middle of May. We'd, need, we'd, we'd be relying on 75 to 80,000 Eastern Europeans to come and fill those jobs for picking the fresh fruit and vegetables. And obviously with the current travel restrictions, it's very challenging. Labor shortages and restricted cross-border movement coupled with increased demand could trigger food inflation and make certain high-value products, such as fruit, vegetables, meat, and fish, harder to come by. Depending on where you are in the world, and, and, and uh, particularly in developing economies, the measures that some of the governments take are quite um, draconial, and, and I'm not uh, discussing that that is the wrong thing to do, absolutely not, but they have to make this uh, strong stance and keep people off the street. And that starts to interfere with food supply chains. And so situations like in India are, are pretty dramatic at the moment, I would say. Emerging economies face a higher risk than developed economies, but the supply chain is getting global attention. G20 leaders pledge to ensure the movement of vital medical supplies, critical farm products, and other goods and services. At the end of the chain, supermarkets working around the clock to keep shelves stocked amid the shopping frenzy. Why do you... Okay. So sadly, yes, we have to wait on that whole thing to cycle on the video, which is why it wasn't as smooth as I like it to be. But you remember they all said, oh, don't panic, don't panic. You also remember me saying Agenda 21, where they're going to control the, the, the hunger issue, right? So what we have to do now is, pardon me, is we have to create panic. Everybody rush out there. And he even said food inflation. Expect food to come up much higher in the coming weeks. Expect shelves not to have essential items like vegetables and meat. I mean, I, I already saw this coming. I really did. I saw it coming all the way that we were going to start creating other issues that's going to help back up the Agenda 21. Now, tomorrow, 
of course, I'm going to have a video up about leaders who are supporting one world uh, governments and, and, and such as the Pope. I mean, he's all for it as well. Um, but let me know what you think about this in the comments below and let me know what you think that the government's trying to do or if it's, you know, purely uh, innocent, let me know. Uh, that's all I got for this video, and thanks for tuning in. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss any videos when they come out. Bullshit, I can't hear you. Sound off like you got a pair.